savor my hair being down. It's gonna last about 0.5 seconds. <laughs> Welcome back. Today is a video a lot of you guys have been requesting lately because this has been the year so far of skin tints. 2020, it was the year that every brand thought they had a brand new idea. We're gonna put out a skin tint. I bought a lot of them. Anything that kind of met my personal standards for ingredients, I bought it, I tried it. I did dedicated videos on just about every single one of these at some point on my channel, mostly in the last three months. And every time that I post one of those review videos, inevitably the comments are, how does this compare to X? And so I really tried to consider and anticipate everything that someone might want to compare about these specific products, not just the wear time, not just the finish, not just the coverage level, but also the ingredients and the cost and the amount that you get for your money. So I did make you guys a spreadsheet. It's just kind of a little checklist of those kinds of concerns and things like that. I will have that linked down below as just kind of a Google doc for you guys to browse at your leisure. We're gonna start with the lowest coverage and I'm going to go all the way up to the highest coverage even on some of the ones that I don't personally consider skin tints. I'm going to go Wayne Goss here. I have a little bit of like color corrector on my face and stuff and like brows and like mascara, but I reserved the rest of my face so that we can kind of swatch on my bare skin, each one of these so that you can see the coverage levels and probably also like the shades that I was able to pick, the closeness I was able to get to my own complexion. I've also listed in the chart the actual amount of shades in each of these shade ranges because honestly, some of them it's a deal maker and some of them it's a deal breaker. So all of those things are going to be covered in this video so that you guys can make the most educated decision based on the skin tints that I've reviewed on my channel thus far. So without further ado, guys, let's go ahead and jump in. Okay, yep. <laughs> Did you enjoy that? Did you enjoy having my hair down? Because it's making me crazy. Also, if you are curious, yes, this is like the same top that I was wearing two videos ago, except that was a dress. This is a top. They're both from a brand called Tribe Alive, if you are interested. That is just, a lot of people are asking and um, I love them. That I'm all about, especially as it gets warmer outside in Austin, things that just touch my body as little as possible. And these are just, super, super lovely. So anyway, the first one that we're going to be starting with, shocking, I know, is the Glossier Perfecting Skin Tint. I have it in the shade G11. It does come in 12 shades. It is $26 for one ounce and it contains coconut and silicones. It does not have phenoxyethanol in it. It does not have chemical sunscreen in it. It does not have fragrance in it. And it does not have any kind of SPF claims. So on dewiness, I give this a nine. And these, some of these are, I don't know, some of these are kind of arbitrary. It's just kind of like a one to 10 scale on coverage and dewiness. This is a nine on dewiness and a one on coverage. So I will show you guys how this swatches on my face here. Do, 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 do. So that's the Glossier. As you can see, when you blend it, you get a little tiny bit of blurring coverage, just a little bit, not buildable. Don't, don't try and build this. It doesn't dry down enough to do that. And when you're comparing skin tints, you know, a lot of times when we're talking about silicones, it means that it's gonna have its own dry down. It does an okay job, but the idea of the Glossier skin tint is that it's more of like a dewy texture on your skin than it is about coverage. Keep in mind, Glossier is about being like age neutral, you know, and kids that are going to be buying Glossier don't necessarily need full coverage and they definitely don't need to always look made up. And honestly, like women with mature skin who wear this, and I've heard from a lot of them, love it because it doesn't settle into lines because it does stay so dewy. So yeah, I do think that this is a very agreeable formula if this is what you're looking for. If you're looking for something buildable that is going to be able to be flexible and build powder looks on top of and things like that, absolutely not. Don't go for this, but it definitely is like a standalone product that is hard to compare to anything else. Okay, the next one, and honestly, a lot of these get the same kind of like coverage rating for me, so they might be a little bit different, but the next one I wanna talk about is the Ilia Super Serum Skin Tint SPF 40. I have this in the shade Tulum. There are 18 shades in this range. It does have an SPF of 40 without chemical sunscreen. This is the most high quality in terms of ingredient integrity. This is the only one in the entire situation, I believe, that does not have 
coconut in it, that's not true. Super Goop also does not have coconut in it. So keep that in mind, but it doesn't have coconut, it doesn't have phenoxyethanol, it doesn't have chemical sunscreens, it doesn't have silicones, and it doesn't have fragrance. That though is going to set you back $46 for an ounce. That's just how it works, unfortunately. This is the purest of ingredients with very good performance. I really, really enjoyed this, and you guys saw uh, the wear test on my channel. I will link all the videos down below of me wear testing all of these things because they almost all have individual videos. This is I believe the essence of a skin tint. It has a presence on the skin, it has a blurring quality to it, and it does improve the overall texture, but it also has a lot of skincare benefits and it does have, like I said, the, uh, the zinc oxide, I wanna say. Yes, 12% zinc oxide sunscreen. Now granted, you're not going to be wearing enough of this that it qualifies to actually be your daily SPF on your face. Wear a separate SPF, but <laughs> it never hurts and I'm glad that they did that so you can see Glossier, we have kind of this really dewy finish here. This also has a dewy finish. I still gave this a nine for dewiness. I did, when I wear tested this, I almost said war tested this, I did put the Ilia powder on top of it, the fade into you powder, but it is the only powder that I would recommend using with it. Maybe the Wouter. The Ilia and the Wouter are meant to be used with skin tints. If you tried to use Thrive, hourglass any kind of coverage building setting powder you'd be very disappointed because it would break up really easily on something like this just because it does have so many oils in it and i know everything's going to look very just kind of vague here in the beginning but things are going to start to build so the next one is the cover girl clean fresh skin milk i think i was the only person on the YouTube platform that liked this. I'm probably wrong, but the thing that I heard the most and that I saw in action the most in other people's reviews was that it had a really weird texture to it. Their particular bottle came with little like balls or globules or something in it. And I think that if that's the case, maybe think twice <laughs> about buying this because mine didn't have that, but I did see that the majority of people were complaining about that. So. Here is the CoverGirl. I have it in the shade 510 Porcelain. It comes in 14 shades, has no SPF, it does contain coconut, it does contain phenoxyethanol, also has rosemary leaf extract in it. This was one of those like greatest hits of clean beauty kind of thing. They were like, I don't know, put it all in there. No chemical sunscreen, no SPF promises at all, does contain silicones, does not have fragrance. The only one that I'm going to be talking about today that has fragrance is the Bite Beauty. I gave this one a 10 on dewiness. It is super, super dewy. It is actually dewier, I feel like, on dry down than the Glossier. It just is, like, doesn't support powder at all whatsoever. Don't do it. And this is $10 at Target and you get one ounce. Okay, the next one I don't actually have on hand. I wanted to include it though, is the Florence by Mills Like a Light Skin Tint. I did end up decluttering this. I don't necessarily recommend it, but I kind of wanted to give you guys a landmark if it's something that you own. I gave it a five for dewiness, a four for coverage. It's $10.80 for one ounce. And uh, there are 20 shades, which is great. It does contain coconut, it does contain phenoxyethanol, it does not have a sunscreen claim, and doesn't contain chemical sunscreens, and it does have silicones and no fragrance. But like I said, I, I did declutter it. It was not my favorite. It didn't like to spread very evenly and it dried down a little too quickly and I felt like it got a little patchy especially for a skin tint. Okay, here is one that I have not actually reviewed on my channel and that is because I am in the midst of organizing a return for it. I rarely return things, but this was so pricey and their shade range sucks. So this is the Iris and Romeo Best Skin Days. I bought this when I was kind of binging on Instagram, just trying to order all the things that were like bombing me with ads. I was like, okay, if they're bombing me with ads, they're probably bombing you with ads. You're probably curious about it. So. Let's find out together. So I bought this. This is $64, but you get 1.7 ounces. And so it's $37.65 an ounce, which is still less expensive than the Ilia. But at the same time, I still don't necessarily want to spend $64 on a foundation, like period, full stop. But I gave it a five for dewiness, a four for coverage, and it only comes in five shades. And you're gonna see why that's a problem here. This is the fairest shade. This is light and uh, this is what we're dealing with. It is definitely a little bit more coverage. It has a ton of skincare benefits to it and it's really like cooling on the skin, but not enough coverage for me. And you can see it is, oh, it is the wrong shade. It is super deep for me and orangey yellow and it just 
doesn't work and I feel like as an initial offering from this brand found it to be just a little bit disappointing especially for the money and all the claims I was very excited about it but yeah that one is a five for doingness a four for coverage it has a an SPF of 25 that does not contain chemical sunscreen it does have coconut and phenoxyethanol in it but uh no fragrance and yes on silicone so it's not even like the cleanest foundation and it's I think pretty expensive and like this doesn't cut it for shade range that's why I'm returning it. Okie dokie, now we move into what I would recommend. When I don't recommend a product, I like to recommend a product as an alternative. This is what I think they were going for. This is the Elate Cosmetics Uplift Full Tint. And this comes in eight shades. I had no problem kind of finding my shade in this particular one. I know like this is supposed to be very uh, empirical, but I, I love this foundation. I love it because it also is extremely cooling on the skin. I really feel like this was, they like took this to the lab and said, mimic this, except this has much better ingredients and it is better for the price. So this is the Elate Full Tint. And I'm gonna kind of blend that a little bit because that's definitely like higher concentration than you would probably wear. But this is super buildable, super, super buildable, especially for something that doesn't contain silicones. Oh my gosh, this stuff is so beautiful. You can see this in action in my zero waste, full face of zero waste. So you can see if I do that, I can then let that kind of dry down and I can build that. Oh, it's just so cooling on the skin and it does do a beautiful job of spreading out really evenly. I think that this is just a very skin loving skin tint. I think it's so, so beautiful. Now they do have two and I only put the uplift foundation on the list that I'm going to put on Google because they are basically the same in terms of ingredients. They just happen to have a higher and lower coverage version. And this is the refresh fresh tint so they have two skin tints essentially yeah they're different shades i think that's why i also like the uplift better uh you can see that this one is less coverage i don't totally love this formula i like the uplift a lot better look at that iris and romeo turning orange on me oh god that's awful looking okay so i gave the elate uplift foundation a seven for doingness a five for coverage it's 32 dollars for one ounce 32 dollars an ounce does contain coconut but does not contain phenoxyethanol chemical sunscreen silicones or fragrance does not have an SPF claim on it at all. And of course, all of these are cruelty free. Okay, next we have the Arrive Skin Boost. This is my most recent review, I wanna say, that I did and I really, really enjoyed this. So they also only have five shades, but this one did match me pretty well. And I don't know, I guess that like it fell in my favor just because there happened to be a shade for me. But other than that, I do think that they need to do better in terms of their shade range. So you can see there's more coverage there. We're, we're gonna have like this crazy uh, gradient going on. So definitely more coverage. I did though at first say that this doesn't have coconut in it and I'm not totally sure actually because it has copper triglyceride in it and uh, but not cocoa caprolate. So I'm not sure if that's always derived from coconut. It might be and in which case uh, I need to issue a correction. But you can see you do get more coverage from this, but that's because it is just a slightly more robust formula in terms of actual like performance ingredients. So I gave this a seven for dewiness. You can see it is still dewy, but it definitely like dries down and goes a little bit, a little bit more satin. Five for coverage, so medium coverage, <laughs> medium coverage for a skin tint. It's $26 for an ounce. Like I said, there's five shades, no SPF claims on this. Yes, it contains coconut. I just want to be on the safe side there. Yes, it contains phenoxyethanol. No chemical sunscreens. Yes, it contains silicones, quite a few actually, and no fragrance. So as always, if that meets your ingredients requirements, obviously it's definitely not as clean as some of the other ones. It is a very, very beautiful skin tint, especially for the price, $26. I have it in the shade of light. All right. Everyone recognizes that sound. This is the Kosa's Tinted Oil. So this is $42 for an ounce and it has 16 shades. I will say, I'm not sure so much about the tinted oil, but definitely the concealer. The feedback that I have gotten from a lot of other people is that they don't have a concealer that really matches them. And a lot of this stuff tends to skew very yellow. Definitely keep that in mind when it comes to Kosas, but I do have shade one and I think that it's beautiful. Unlike Glossier though, there are a few things like this on the market. So the, 
Josie Marin Argan Oil Foundation is just like this, and so is the Vapor, but this one has the ingredients that I like the most. So I gave this a five for coverage, but it's odd because it's super, super lightweight on the skin and it's very, very oily. Like it is not stabilized by any silicones. It has no phenoxyethanol, no chemical sunscreens, no fragrance. It does contain coconut. It has 16 shades, $42 for one ounce. And you can see, like I said, you get a little bit of dewiness, medium dewiness, less than you would expect necessarily from like an oil based skin tint foundation. And that I think is because your skin tends to absorb the oils in it. And what you're left with is just a kind of satin finish. This is some people's holy grail. Some people totally hate it. So I, I get it. It does not support powder. Do not try it. It really only works with its own concealer because, and this is something that I have you know, learned recently, but I feel like I need to yell it from the rooftops. A lot of times a foundation or a concealer will look like they're not performing well in certain circumstances. And it's because they've been combined improperly. So you have to keep in mind, I think it's very, very important for us to educate ourselves on what the main ingredients are in any of our products, especially complexion products, just to get them to perform optimally. So a foundation that's very oil-based, you want to match that with a concealer that's very oil-based. If you try and match it with a concealer that's very silicone based or very water based, they're going to disagree and it's going to make it look like that's a poorly performing product one or the other. You know, I don't make the rules. It's just science. They don't like each other and they just don't want to agree with each other. And so even if you're not going to, you know, go full clean beauty devotee. I do think that, you know, for the sake of a face of makeup, not frustrating you, it's very important to understand what the base of it is, whether it's very silicone or very oily or very water-based. So yes, this is right in the middle, five on dewiness, five on coverage, $42, it's, you know, up there in price alongside the Ilia. I feel like they are very much kind of like the prestige clean beauty brands out there. I love what Kosas is doing pretty much all the time, but again, this is either for you or it's not. All right, this was my foundation of the year in 2019. This is the Super Goop Daily Correct CC Cream. I had heard rumblings from them that they were going to do uh, reformulation and adding shades to this range. They really do need to add shades to this range because it's four shades. That's not good, not good soupy goopy. But I love this because it does have pretty darn good coverage. I gave it a six on coverage. I gave it a four on doing this because you can use this for a little bit more coverage and also wear it with powder and things like that. I do find for whatever reason, the deeper tone, this is fair light, but I do have it in just light. And that's a pretty tan shade. For whatever reason, that one has more coverage and dries down a little bit more matte. It's almost like it has more of the sunscreen properties in it, like, or the mineral pigmentation, obviously. And so it makes it almost more matte, whereas the lighter shade has a little bit more of a dewy finish. It's a little bit strange, but I do absolutely love this. I do highly recommend it. We are talking $36 for 1.6 ounces. So it's $22.50 per ounce. That is one of the better prices for like non drugstore that's on this list. Only four shades, unfortunately. SPF 35, all mineral. So titanium dioxide, 2% zinc oxide, 20%, which is great. No phenoxy ethanol, which is awesome. It does not have any chemical sunscreens in it. It does contain silicones and it does not have a fragrance. I just really enjoy this. I think it's a good value and I hope that they expand the range on this. Okay, one of, it's just kind of hard to compete with this, to be honest. Like this is one of those ones where I'm just like, Ugh. If you can move past silicones, guys, it's really hard to beat this for performance and price. So this is the ColourPop Pretty Fresh. I'm really, really glad that I bought this because I was super, and I say this every time, super unimpressed with their first foundation that they put out. It was just very bad. It performed very poorly on me and I didn't like their concealer either, but this is a whole different story. I do also really love the Pretty Fresh Concealer. I think it's absolutely beautiful. They both perform super, super beautifully, but it's because they have a lot of those like convenience ingredients in them. They have cyclic silicones. That might not be your thing. So for dewiness, I gave this a four. It does go a little bit satin on the skin. For coverage, I gave this a six. It is $14 for 1.45 ounces. So we're talking $9.66 an ounce. As usual, ColourPop wins for 
value on how much you're actually getting for your money. It comes in 24 shades. They really, really went for it. It does not have any SPF claims. It does contain coconut. It does contain phenoxyethanol. It does not have a chemical sunscreen in it. It does contain plenty of silicones and it is fragrance free. So let me go ahead and switchy swatch that one. Where did I, yeah, right there. Oh, she is so good. I love this foundation. I get it. Silicones aren't for everyone. That's why I'm kind of trying to run the gamut here for you guys so that you can get a full scope of what's out there. But this is a brand that I call clean beauty adjacent. <laughs> They're not clean beauty, but they are making an effort to make non-irritating products that I feel like do a pretty good job of not having unnecessary ingredients in them that are just designed to perform at a very affordable price. So a lot of you guys, you know, ColourPop is one of your absolute loves. Another whole contingent on my channel loves e.l.f. I don't have an e.l.f. skin tint, but my point is there are very high value, I feel like, foundations and products out there in general that are still worth reviewing on my channel, even if they don't meet the highest standard of clean beauty because not everybody can afford to spend $46 on a foundation. And I have the Pretty Fresh in Fair 2W. All right, moving right along, we have the Bite Change Maker Supercharged Micellar Foundation. I have it in the shade L10. There are 32 shades in this range. This is Bite's first offering in terms of a complexion product. They have always been a food grade, super clean lip product company, and they do a great job at that. And this was an almost perfect product as far as I'm concerned. So we have a three on dewiness. This is actually a pretty matte product. For a skin tint, I gave it a seven for coverage because it is a little bit more coverage than other skin tints, but this is also not comparing it to foundations. I do think that this kind of tops out the level of coverage that you can expect from a skin tint and still call it a skin tint, you know? And it's super buildable, but that's because it has plenty of silicones in it. I don't object to them at all. I think that this is just one of the more beautiful skin tint foundations that's out there, especially with the primer and the powder that came with it. They are not mandatory to buy and wear with it, but I do love that powder. I wear that powder all the time because it has like no coverage, but it adds so much bulletproofness in terms of like setting quality that it's just really unique in that sense. Most of the time, if you really want a bulletproof face of makeup, you're also adding a lot of coverage. Like I was saying in the case of Thrive or Hourglass, you know, you're building coverage and it's always really beautiful. You know, I love like that blurred full beat kind of look sometimes, but if you're looking for something that's going to set in a very flawless way, that powder is so, so good and it does not build coverage. So that is the Bite Change Maker. We have a three on dewiness, a seven on coverage. So it's kind of, you know, the opposite, I would say, of the Ilia. The Ilia is, you know, low coverage, high dewiness. This is higher coverage, low dewiness. And so it's $39.50 for one ounce. Definitely kind of prestige pricing. 32 shades, like I said. It does contain coconut and phenoxyethanol. Does not have any sunscreen claims, no chemical sunscreen. Does contain plenty of silicones. And I think that that's what makes it perform so beautifully on the skin. The big hang up here is that they did put a little bit of fragrance in there. A lot of you guys are just kind of objecting to that in general, just because you don't want to put fragrance on your face in the form of any kind of complexion product. However, it does not linger in my experience. It has not kept me from using it, but it does make your brushes smell like this foundation. If you use it consistently, you'll be like, what is that smell? What is that? What is that kind of flowery scent? And then you just realize it's everything that's touched the Bite Beauty Change Maker Foundation. That's just how it is. But the other products, the primer and the powder don't smell. I don't know why they did that. And it is just kind of an editorial decision that they made to kind of enhance the experience good, fine, not everybody agrees with that, you know, let that weigh into your decision whether this is for you or not, but I personally absolutely love it. So the last thing that I kind of want to talk about that I feel like is not technically a skin tint, but a lot of you guys really want to see it compared. And a lot of you guys have asked me what the difference is between Glossier and Thrive. And I just want to show you guys what the difference is between Glossier and Thrive. So this is the Thrive Buildable Blur CC Cream. It comes in 14 shades. 18 shades and I have it in fair light. I don't wear this that often because it does contain chemical sunscreens, but I'm gonna put it right over Glossier here. That is almost a foundation. 
It has so much coverage. They call it a buildable blur. It is buildable and especially with the Thrive powder, you can get a bulletproof long wearing face of makeup that is practically full coverage with this. So that is the difference. They are diametrically at the opposite ends of the spectrum in terms of coverage. So just bear that in mind. There were a couple more products that you guys wanted me to include in this that I thought it honestly, I just need to kind of get it out there so that we can educate ourselves because I haven't kind of touched these products in a while. And that was that you guys really wanted to see me compare Kiarwise and Westman Atelier in this. So I have worn Kiarwise and Westman Atelier in a side-by-side -side wear test, guys. If you're ever curious about those kinds of things, especially with complexion products, there's a search bar on my channel. I have compared so many things in this way that you're probably curious about. If you're new to my channel, go search, see if they exist because I have, I feel like, you know, the requests that come in, I really, really try and accommodate as many of them as I can. And I did find these two products to be extremely similar. So I want to show you guys that basically in my opinion, these are not skin tints. So this is the Westman Atelier. What's it called? Vital skin foundation stick. I have it in Atelier zero. I've used quite a lot of it and it is more of a universal coverage stick. If you have it in certain shades, like Gucci Westman definitely recommends buying it in multiple shades, you know, to the tune of 50 or $60 a stick, like of course she does. But this is very high coverage, very high coverage. This is where we're getting into like Wayne Goss territory here. Very high coverage. You can really build this up and it does, both of these contain coconut but this builds so beautifully and you can wear it if you have it in a certain shade, either as a foundation or as a concealer. I kind of wear this more as a concealer when I'm a little bit, I don't know, like tan in the summer and I will wear it on top of Umbra Tint from Drunk Elephant. And this was another one that you guys requested that I show you as a, as a skin tint, which I thought was a little interesting, but I guess it is kind of like a makeup. It sort of is. And this is the only shade, obviously. I think that that's the reason that I don't really consider it to be, you know, comparable in this video is just because it doesn't have a shade range. It's just one shade, but it's a sunscreen first and foremost, a mineral sunscreen. And as you can see, it's tan and it's meant to be tan. It's not meant to match your skin. It's meant to tan your skin, not, you know, in a self tanner kind of way, but just in a temporary way, it's supposed to give you kind of a glow. And so you do end up with, I don't know, I would call that like dewy, low to medium coverage. And then I would always like on my honeymoon, I wore that with the Westman Atelier, you know, in any spots that I needed to brighten up. And it, it was one of my favorite faces. Makeup comes together so quickly. It's absolutely foolproof. I absolutely recommend using one of the Thrive bronzer brushes to apply the Westman Atelier, like under your eyes and stuff like that. It blends so gorgeously. And then finally, the Cure Wise. This is something that I want to re-up on because I haven't used it in so long and it's because I was like scared of running out and then I just kind of moved on to other things. But you can see I pretty much killed this. I'm obsessed with it. So this also is an extremely flexible, buildable product. I would not say that this is a skin tint. It's a foundation. It's meant to be a foundation and you can build this to full coverage and calling it a skin tint. I feel like is sort of selling it short because it doesn't top out in terms of coverage. You can build this all the way to full coverage. It comes with a powder. I mean, it doesn't come with it, but you know, you can buy a Kiarwise powder to wear with this. I'm obsessed with their powder. It's so, so beautiful. And I just want to emphasize that the Westman Atelier is kind of in a category all its own, but it's pretty high coverage. And the Kiarwise and the Thrive Buildable Blur, I would pretty much categorize all as foundations, not skin tints. And then I also have, like I said, this sort of, you know, blob in the middle of my forehead of the umber tint from Drunk Elephant. And that is because it doesn't have any shades. So I don't necessarily consider it a skin tint. It's just kind of a tint, like a one tint SPF. So in terms of cost value, ColourPop comes in first, followed by CoverGirl, then followed by Florence by Mills. And then as soon as you get into the Prestige, it kind of jumps to about twice the amount uh, per ounce, which is when we get into Supergoop, Glossier, and Arrive. 
Uh, and then the Elate is kind of the jump. And then the most expensive is the both the Kosas Tinted Oil and the Ilia Super Skin Serum. So that is also, I feel like, kind of on a sliding scale of ingredient integrity as well. You kind of get what you pay for if you are looking for ultimate ingredient purity, the way that like Ilia and Kosas are able to offer. But it's going to come at a prestige clean beauty price. If you're looking for a high performance product, I definitely think that the Ilia is super high performing. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. It is expensive, but it really, really hits like all the marks for any concerns that you might have. But if you're looking for the best bang for your buck and the best, honestly, the best performing of all of these is is probably the, the ColourPop Pretty Fresh. It's just so good. So if you are okay with some silicones and only being clean beauty adjacent, I highly recommend this. If you are looking for like the cleanest of all purity standards, I recommend the Ilia. And I think that the other big takeaway that I want people to get from this video is that especially the Glossier and the Kosas, you either love them or you don't. You are not going to get much coverage out of this. It is mainly a dewy texture on the skin. So it is really not comparable with anything else it doesn't behave like a foundation. It doesn't even behave really like a skin tint. It like literally is just a little veil of the Glossier glow on your face with just a little bit of blurring pigment. But I joke that I could wear like any four of the top shades in this and you probably wouldn't notice the difference because it just blends out so sheer, so sheer. Do not expect coverage from this. And the Co says, this is just if it's for you, it's for you. If it's not, it's not. You're not going to be able to wear this with a silicone-based concealer. You're not going to be able to put powder on this. It's for the person who this is exactly what they've been looking for their entire life. And if it doesn't fit your routine, it's not, you, you can't shoehorn it in there. And if you're okay with a little bit of coconut, I really, I just, I think that this is so beautiful and so underappreciated. The Elite Uplift Full Tint for the price for $32 for an ounce, it is still in a slightly more prestige pricing bracket, but it's, oh, what a pleasure to use. As far as like putting a foundation on your face, this one is the biggest pleasure to use. You just dip a brush in it and you wipe it across your face and I'm like, Yes, like there's just something about it where you're just putting on better skin. It's a fantastic feeling. It's cooling. It's so, so lovely. So yeah, those are, those are my kind of random votes of confidence for those products. I am super, super grateful that there is this smorgasbord of options out here. And I really, really hope that this video gives you the information that you need, even if I'm getting like painstakingly specific or kind of like annoyingly opinionated on some of these things. I just really want you guys to be able to take away the information that is going to help you make a decision going forward. And I want to be able to refer people to this video in the future when they ask, how does this compare to this or how does this compare to that? Like, I want to be able to kind of show you guys the order of <laughs> coverage levels and also just the value of each one of these, depending on what your specific needs are, because I know that my audience is like a microbiome. <laughs> you all found me for different reasons and you all have different things that you want from different products. And that is what I am here to try and make valuable content for. So hopefully this satisfies that. If you did enjoy this, if you found this valuable, do give it a thumbs up. Thank you guys so much. Thank you so much for 30,000. Un freaking believable. I have been having a really hard time lately. I am so tired. I am so burnt out. And it's just so weird to say that, I guess, just because I feel like I shouldn't be burnt out because I feel like I sleep so much more lately being stuck at home, but we stay up later and I'm just in this kind of icky routine. I don't know. I'm really, really trying, but it's hard. Every day is a little bit different. I'm very, very glad that it's Friday. Tomorrow is my birthday. But anyway, <laughs> Thank you guys for being a part of my channel. Thank you guys for getting me to 30,000, which is just an unfathomable number. Like, I just can't even believe that. And thank you for making my dreams a reality and continuing to make my dreams a reality. I'm going to try to keep making content that is the most saturated with value for you guys as much as I possibly can. So yeah, thank you guys for being a subscriber. If you're not already a subscriber, hit the button down below subscribe. I mean, why not? You're already here. And uh, definitely ring the little bell because I upload on Undays. 
on days every day at this point. So I, I upload whenever I dang well have a video ready and I try and do it as often as possible. So get the notification so you don't miss anything. Thank you guys so much for watching and for hanging out with me today on this humid, gloomy day. Thank you for brightening my day. I love you guys so much and I will see you in the next one. Bye.